This is News 8 Now, this morning. The road on the, the church hill there got uh, slick, the snow covered when we got there on scene, um, and the semi just came around the corner, couldn't make the corner, uh, partially slid off the road, and then went in over a boulder and hit the side of the house. We have meteorologists actually on our staff that predict our weather too as, as we're going forward. So we're looking really close at that, you know, to make sure we can provide electricity and natural gas, you know, in the coming week. It's self-funded, so the, the maintenance of the parking ramps, the staffing to clean them and maintain them to make repairs is all funded through whether it's uh, the user fees of the parking ramps or parking citations. And that was your eye opener. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for watching News 8 Now this morning. I'm Ken Kozarowski. That's Derek Sibley. It is Wednesday, December 21st, 2022, just after 6 o'clock. Morning temps in the negatives, but feeling like a minor inconvenience compared to the storm front that is coming our way, Derek. Yeah, that's right, Ken. As you mentioned, we're below zero all across the Cooley region this morning, so you're going to have to bundle up out there. Kind of a precursor of what's to come here as well, because our not only are our temperatures are going to continue to look bad, but uh, the wind chills, and of course, we are also going to be talking about some snow here moving in, which we'll get to here in just a bit. Current temperatures, by the way, well below zero all across the Cooley region this morning and wind chill factors. Well, they feel very similar to that. In fact, in La Crosse, we're looking at 16 below is what we feel like here when you factor in the wind speeds. Overall, pretty clear right now for most of us. The clouds, though, continue to build in from the west and we expect cloudy weather conditions as a result of those clouds continuing to move east in our general direction. You can see cloudy weather conditions all day long today with a light east wind. Temperatures uh, warming up into the teens here by the time we reach early this afternoon. That will continue throughout the rest of the day here as far as those teens go. And then we start to tap into some of the snow by the time we reach the late afternoon to early evening. Some of that snow may turn heavy at times and of course Ken will break down those details as far as the timing and of course the accumulations all of that in the weather forecast. All right. Thanks very much Derek. Yeah. Let's get to some news this morning. According to AAA 2.2 million Wisconsinites will be traveling for the holidays. News 8 Now's Emily Haugen found out the incoming weather might be putting a pause on your plans. This holiday season, there's a good chance you're planning to hit the roads. Right here in Wisconsin, 2.2 million are going to be, and of that, 2 million are going to be getting in the car. AAA says many Wisconsinites will travel at least 50 miles this holiday season. But as Christmas approaches, winter weather might make you hit the brakes. We kind of have a prolonged winter weather system coming in, bringing a mix of snow, wind, and really cold temperatures. And that's all going to combine for multiple days of impacts uh, for the region. Kate Abbott is a meteorologist at the La Crosse National Weather Service. There, they're tracking a winter system that's moving across the Midwest. There will be new fresh snow. How much, we don't quite know, but that new fresh snow is going to blow, and that's what's going to cause the biggest impacts. Abbott says starting Wednesday evening, conditions won't be ideal. It's just really not worth it. Um, to possibly get stuck somewhere. Whether or not you're planning to travel this holiday weekend, AAA says there's a few important things you should always keep in your car this winter. That includes a blanket, a scraper for your car, extra winter gear for everyone you're traveling with, and a water bottle and some food. And most importantly, you should always have your phone on you with a charger so you're ready to go anytime. If you must travel, Abbott says listen to alerts and keep an eye on the sky. Check the forecast and check the road conditions before you head out. Really be informed this week. It's not a week where you want to just hop in your car and take off. You want to know what's coming. In La Crosse, Emily Haugen, News 8 Now. And to be extra prepared, you can download our News 8000 First Warren weather app. That's absolutely free on your app store. You can also check road conditions on the site 511wi.gov. We'll post a link to the Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa websites at news8000.com. That incoming storm could also lead to some electrical outages. Excel Energy employees say there are a few things you should keep in mind ahead of this weather system. Stay away from any downed power lines and keep natural gas meters clear. If you are an Excel customer, you can sign up for outage notifications. Excel Energy crews are already preparing for this weather. We have meteorologists actually on our staff that predict our weather too as, as we're going forward. So we're looking really close at that, you know, to make sure we can provide electricity and natural gas, you know, in the coming week. 
And if you want to reduce your energy bill, Excel suggests turning down your thermostat when you're away from home and opening blinds to let sunlight in. And of course, Derek will be back to explain more on this incoming storm system later on this morning. The fate of a Hoka home is unknown after a semi-truck ran into the side of it again. Hoka's assistant fire chief was on his way to a department meeting when a semi missed a turn and crashed into a house. He called in his department to help the family who was on the first floor near the area the semi crashed into. It happened around 7 and right after it had started snowing. The road on the, the church hill there got uh, slick, was snow covered when we got there on scene, um, and the semi just came around the corner, couldn't make the corner, uh, partially slid off the road, and then went in th over a boulder and hit the side of the house. And get this, this isn't the first time that house has been hit by a vehicle. The homeowner put boulders out front to try to protect the house, but this semi rolled right over him. Chief Ross says he's waiting for an update on whether that house will be condemned. Fees for parking in downtown La Crosse will change next year. On Monday, the Board of Public Works approved a new parking fee structure. Currently, weekdays between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., drivers can park in ramps free of charge for the first three hours. The fee is $1 per hour after that, and the fee tops out at 8 bucks. Starting this spring, the three-hour grace period goes away. Drivers will then pay $1 an hour during daytime hours on weekdays. The $8 maximum will not change. According to the city, by allowing drivers three hours of free parking, it loses more than $13,000 a year. Supporters say the new fee structure allows the city's parking utility to keep up with maintenance. It's self-funded, so the, the maintenance of the parking ramps, the staffing to clean them and maintain them to make repairs is all funded through whether it's uh, the user fees of the parking ramps or parking citations. new fees to start in February or early March. A local chef is being honored with his third Emmy. The TV show Wisconsin Foodie recently received its latest award for an episode with Siren Shrub Company and White Feather Organics. The series focuses on great local food in Wisconsin and turning Wisconsin farmers and small business owners into celebrities. The show's host and co-owner of the Barocca's Driftless Cafe has been on the show for five seasons. He says the time and passion he's put in is worth it to help put Viroqua on the map. Any publicity that comes from any of the work that we do if we can bring that back home, it creates a really beautiful story. A Wisconsin native, Zama has run the Driftless Cafe for nearly 10 years. Students at La Crosse's Longfellow Middle School are traveling 7,000 miles to the Middle East using just a paintbrush. News 8 Now's Dua Esrar spoke to their art teacher about the importance of bringing diversity to their classroom. Careful of your neighbors, careful of your elbows. How do you hold on to your culture in a new place? There was over 10,000 refugees that entered just Fort McCoy just down the road from us. These are the brushes. That's the question Shelley Walter Reinders is trying to answer. I couldn't imagine what that would be like. The Longfellow Middle School art educator has been teaching students about a form of art. Islamic tile project. It's not the first thing that comes to mind when you hear La Crosse, Wisconsin. It was the first time that I've learned about um, Islamic culture in a classroom. Culture you likely didn't notice is all around us. In shower curtains, in pillows, in rugs, and I think it's everywhere and we just don't recognize it or realize it. The Tile Project provides an opportunity. Celebrating our each individual uniqueness as human beings. To bridge a gap between students of different backgrounds. It creates a place of support and welcoming for any students that we have in this building who are practicing Muslims. And that's super important because we are all in this together. Behind each pain stroke is a lesson. Part of this process was to look at vocabulary. It wasn't just art making, it was looking at a map of the world and where Muslims live. It's a lesson that goes beyond this classroom. There's so much more to the world than like what we know. Like there's so much more to the world than just Longfellow and there's so much more than just America and Wisconsin and La Crosse. Reporting in La Crosse, Dua Srar, News 8 Now. Thanks very much, Dua. The tiles are on display at Longfellow Middle School. Walter Reinders says she hopes that Muslim students who walk by the display feel represented. Well, how old were you when you decided on a career? 
Area 8th graders are getting a jump start thanks to La Crosse's Western Technical College. Western invited 1,400 8th graders from 12 different schools onto campus for a career day. The students toured campus, learned about some of Western's programs, and heard from community speakers working in the career they find interesting. The middle schoolers we spoke with say career day gives them a better idea of what classes they should take in high school. I think this is a lot of help for a lot of other kids too who are trying to figure out what they want to do when they're older and it gives us just like that extra information that'll help us. More than 60 community speakers took part on Tuesday to offer their advice. Time is now 6.13 a.m. Still ahead on your morning news. No more PFAS for Scotch Tape Company 3M. We'll have the details on what it means for the company moving forward. And banking giant Wells Fargo taken to task over accusations it charged its customers illegal fees. That and more still to come after the break. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. Just in time for the Christmas holiday, a Chicago-based snack shop is encouraging people to celebrate by trying a unique Chicago tradition. Candy canes and pickles. It is called the peppermint pickle. Truly bizarre. Some customers ask for other interesting pickle combinations, such as Kool-Aid pickles and Flamin' Hot Cheeto pickles, which are made by sprinkling crushed up Cheetos over the pickle. Truly something I've never seen before. But our own Amy DuPont, a huge pickle lover, and <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. I don't even know if she would try it, but I guess she's the most qualified to go down to Chicago and, and give us a little live report. Don't go anywhere. More News 8 Now this morning coming up after the break. Well, it sure is a little bit of a cloudier start now than what it was here just earlier as we are seeing those clouds continue to work their way towards the east across the Cooley region this morning with current temperature readings still well below zero in many spots. And it feels like the same temperature when you factor in the wind chill, except in La Crosse, though, you're actually feeling colder than the actual temperatures. The wind speeds here downtown are just slightly stronger, making it feel like minus 16 degrees. Now, our actual high temperatures today in La Crosse County should be anywhere between around 9 to maybe about 15. 15 degrees or so here today with temperatures at around 12 if you're in Viroqua. Meanwhile, Lafarge are also looking at 12 today. Highs in Trempolo County reaching 8 today in Arcadia. Meanwhile, 7 degrees in Jackson County today in Black River Falls and then anywhere between around basically 3 to 5 degrees or so across our north zones today. If your school cast this morning, definitely keep yourself warm as we're 6 below zero here. Mostly cloudy skies. We're up to 10 degrees by the lunch hour. Cloudy skies for this afternoon still with temperatures at around 15. We'll talk about everything else plus the major winter storm in the four other forecasts next in weather. The U.S. Postal Service is building one of the largest electric fleets in the U.S., announcing it's buying 66,000 electric vehicles. 45,000 electrics will be ordered from a defense contractor, and they'll buy another 21,000 vehicles from major automakers. It says three-quarters of the fleet will be electric by 2028. And the Postal Service says the upgrade is in part due to $3 billion in Inflation Reduction Act funding. Minnesota company 3M announced it will phase out the manufacturing of so-called forever chemicals, known as PFAS, and remove them from all products by 2025. PFAS used in non-stick frying pans, cosmetics, and other many, many other products can cause cancers and other health problems. They're also bad for the environment because they don't degrade over time. The banking giant Wells Fargo has agreed to pay more than $3.5 billion to settle accusations that it charged its customers illegal fees and interest on auto loans and mortgages. The bank was also accused of incorrectly applying overdraft fees against saving and checking accounts. The settlement includes a record penalty of $1.7 billion. The other $2 billion is restitution to customers. You might be expecting some plastic under your Christmas tree this year, but what about on your dinner plate? Researchers looked into how microplastics might be creeping into your holiday meals. Riley Carlson has the story. Millions of people will be cooking Christmas dinner this weekend, but researchers in England say choosing the right ingredients could make a big difference in how much plastic ends up on your plate. Microplastics are everywhere. If you're eating anything you, and in drinking anything, you will be ingesting a certain number of microplastics. In the study, two roast chicken dinners were cooked, one with packaging and one without, and then plastic content was tested in a lab. Researchers say the dinner cooked without prepackaged ingredients still contained microplastics, but the one cooked with prepackaged ingredients contained as many as seven times more. If you were eating an equivalent wrapped dinner, 
every day for a year, you'd be eating about 10 grams of plastic. That's the equivalent of two of these a year. Researchers say microplastics are in the air and the soil, making it difficult to keep them out of the food supply. None of us want to have large quantities of plastic eating in the food, but whether that is causing any health harm, it's too early to say. They say the best thing to do is try to reduce your exposure as much as possible and cut out the packaging when you can. Experts say plastic production around the world is set to double in the next 20 years and plastic waste flowing into the oceans projected to triple in that same time period. Well, it sure is a brutally cold start here this morning in downtown La Crosse as, as our temperatures are at minus 5 degrees at the airport. But we're looking at a feel-like temperature currently of minus 16 when you factor in the wind chill here this morning. Let's get a check now in Eau Claire. You're looking at a feel-like of minus 8 degrees, and that's the actual temperature here as well with a visibility report of around 10 miles. So at least conditions here for your morning commute are looking pretty good. Notice the widespread temperatures well below zero across the Cooley region this morning with feel-like temperatures very very similar to that as we just saw in La Crosse, which feels like it's 16 below and a feel like temperature currently in Viroqua of 21 at below zero here this morning. Bundle up. Lots of cloud cover moving in uh, throughout the rest of the day. Temperatures warming up above zero by noon, and then it looks like that trend of temperatures in the teens will continue throughout the day and also into the early evening with forecast high temperatures today anywhere between the single digits and teens across much of the area. You can see a lot of the clouds now beginning to spread their way east across the Cooley region out ahead of this storm system, which is already developing snow here across a good chunk of the northern United States, including the northern and central plains. This activity is moving east, and I know it doesn't really look a lot uh, significant right now, but we do expect the system to continue to uh, develop and mature as it moves towards the east. And you can see already by the four o'clock hour, some snow begins to move across our western zones, followed by widespread snowy weather by the time we reach this evening. And it looks like we may even that we may even continue this as we head into the overnight hours, which is probably when we'll see most of the snow here anyway. It looks like by tomorrow morning around five o'clock, most of the snow comes to a close, but a couple of some scattered snow showers are possible, followed by more scattered snow showers by later tomorrow morning. But by the afternoon, I am thinking that most of this is going to be well to the east of us, affecting our friends across central and eastern Wisconsin, and also into Michigan. By 7 p.m. tomorrow, it looks like all of this is coming to a close. But by that point, though, it will continue to remain cloudy and overall pretty windy and gusty here through at least by the end of this work week. And let's talk about some more of those gusts in more detail. And you can see those wind gusts are going to begin to pick up behind that storm system. So after the snow moves out, it's going to be on the ground still, right? But the wind speeds are going to cause some of that blowing and drifting snow conditions for Thursday and especially into Friday, where we could be looking at northwest wind gusts between 40 to 50 miles an hour and at times even higher than that. That will continue through uh, tomorrow night or that will continue through Friday into early Saturday as well as Saturday afternoon with gusty winds up to 40 plus miles an hour also possible. The wind chills are going to be definitely be affected by this as well with those gusty conditions because when the winds pick up, that's when the feel like temperatures will make it feel like it's uh, 20 below in many spots, even up to 30 below here as we head into early on Friday morning. And it looks like these dangerous type of wind chills will continue throughout the day on Friday as well as into the early week, early part of the weekend with wind chill values up to between 30 to 40 below zero here at times. Now we may see some improvement by the time we reach Saturday afternoon into the evening, but overall still very cold. And just to let you know, we're not the only ones dealing with all of these weather elements associated with the storm. From the western United States, eastward through the plains, and also through much of the upper Midwest, all dealing with some sort of winter weather alert, including us here in the Cooley region, obviously, right? We have winter storm warnings here. We were, have, we were under those winter storm watches, but that has been since upgraded there. Four to seven inches of snow are likely, along with some occasional higher totals. And of course, the blowing snow, gusty conditions, and travel impacts are definitely something to take note. Here's a check on your eight-day forecast. We return to normal here, it looks like, by Sunday. And then Monday through Wednesday, we start to warm up here just a little bit. Stay with us, though. Much more news and weather still to come here on News 8 Now this morning. We are, however, taking a quick break with a look at what happened on this day in history, December 21st. We'll be right back.
Overall, pretty quiet start, but we are starting to see some of those clouds beginning to move their way east across the Cooley region this morning, especially off to our western zones where it's starting to turn a little bit more overcast now. Current conditions are well below zero across the Cooley region this morning with wind chill factors even feeling colder than that in many spots. Let's get checked now on your dog walking conditions. Bundle up out there for you and your furry friend with those cloudy skies here overhead this morning and really just continuing through the day by this evening. Cloudy skies still linger with cold conditions and a few snow showers may also sneak into the picture here, especially later this evening. Stay tuned. We'll have a check on your commute forecasts a little bit later. Welcome to the Blitz. It might only be December, but there was a heavyweight showdown last night on the hardwood in West Salem. Panthers are undefeated, ranked number one in Division Three. Lacrosse Central, number two in Division Two. Both these teams were in the state final last year. Both squads trying to get back to Madison. The fans were ready to go at West Salem High School. Panthers led by Peter Latos, averaging 21. The Riverhawks, Bennett Freed at 18 a game. Here he is early on, getting the pass beyond the arc and drilling it. Central off to a 7-0 start. West Salem trying to get back in this one. Three-point shot is off, but Brett McConkey there for the rebound. Puts it back in for the score. And then to Marion Henderson with the cross-court pass to Carson Kepnick. And he's going to drain it. Panthers with an eight-point lead at the break. But Central battling back. Freed would tie it up with this three-pointer. He'd finish with 18 on the night. And then Nick Williams was red hot down the stretch. Pull-up jumper. This one is money. He had 21. Panthers had too much firepower down the stretch, though. Latos, the steal, going coast to coast, somehow gets this one a go. He finished with 14 on the night. West Salem gets the win, 65 to 56. They're now 5 0 to start the year. Blair Taylor's running into the season hot. They're ranked first in Division Four in the latest Wisports.net poll. Wildcats looking to keep it going, hosting Melrose Mindoro. Early first half, Abby Thompson spots up from beyond the arc. Blair Taylor is going to take the early lead. Later on, Melman looking to fight their way back. Jillian Streetman looking to spark the offense. She connects on the long two. Mustangs get on the board. Wildcats offense working in sync. Lindsey Steen hits Thompson in stride. The senior connects for two more. The Wildcat offense starts pouring it on in the corner. Kirsten Kinski puts the home team up 17. Blair Taylor keeps their perfect record intact. 65 to 37. Let's go to La Crescent. Lancer star Kelly Esser playing in her final game on Tuesday night. The senior will be having surgery in less than two weeks. Esser's gotten varsity minutes since the seventh grade. First half, Lancer's trying to win one for their teammate off the inbounds pass. Maya Bubbers, nice cut to the basket for two. La Crescent up six. Later in the half, Lancer's moving the ball nicely. That's Molly Bills getting open down low for two more. Lancer's go up by eight. Tigers fighting back, though. Morgan Majerus, she's going to hit the triple here. That cuts the deficit to three, but the Lancers came to play. Look at the footwork here from Kenley Gratton. Beautiful move, kissing it off the glass. And in the second half, the star of the night finishes her career in style. Esser knocks down the three. Lancers come out on top. They win it 52 to 38. That'll do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. The president of Ukraine is scheduled to visit Washington today. That's according to a statement from the White House press secretary. It's Volodymyr Zelensky's first trip outside Ukraine since the Russian invasion began in February. Amy Kiley has the report. We will pass on gratitude from our boys to the U.S. Congress and U.S. President for their support. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is set to visit Washington, D.C. today. It really solidifies that connection between the United States and Ukraine. The White House says Zelensky will meet with President Joe Biden and a U.S. official says Biden will announce an additional $1.8 billion in security assistance for Ukraine. The official says it will include Patriot missile systems. Ukraine has been asking for them since Russia has been taking out key infrastructure. The enemy increases the number of its troops. Our boys are braver and we need more sophisticated weapons. The White House says Zelensky will address a joint session of Congress after his meeting with Biden. To have a complete total hero in the Congress of the United States would bring honor to the Congress of the United States. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi praised Zelensky and the people of Ukraine when asked about the visit. They are fighting for democracy for all of us. Amy Kiley, News 8 Now. 
Meanwhile, the House Ways and Means Committee will release six years of former President Donald Trump's tax returns sometime this week. The panel received the documents after a years-long legal battle. The returns are from 2015 to 2020, which cover his time as a pre presidential candidate and commander-in-chief. Democrats sought the returns, saying they were needed to evaluate an IRS program that audits presidents. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers says he is not ruling out the use of state funds to construct a passenger rail line between the cities of Madison and Milwaukee that would also expand connections between Chicago and St. Paul. Evers has told the Associated Press that he supports the proposed rail project but was waiting to see what federal funds might be available before committing any state resources. A Tamiflu shortage continues to plague pharmacies across the nation. The antiviral drug helps people with onset flu symptoms. Stores are struggling to keep the medicine in stock due to supply issues. Some pharmacy chains are now limiting purchases of ibuprofen and acetaminophen as well. There have been some minor shortages in the past, but nothing like what pharmacies are dealing with right now. Experts believe this shortage will likely go through the entire flu season this year. Migraines can be a debilitating problem for millions of Americans, and the stress, sights, and even smells of the holiday season can actually trigger serious episodes. Bradley Blackburn has more on how treatment can help. Darian Segura Katz loves to host big family gatherings during the holidays, but last year the wife and mom had to cancel because of her pain. I was supposed to do Thanksgiving. I couldn't because I was in such a bad shape. Like many women, she first experienced migraines in her 40s. Doctors also diagnosed her with a nerve condition called trigeminal neuralgia. Electric shocks to the half of my face to the point that I could not do anything. Dr. Shea Dada with NYU Langone Health treats Segura cats and says she sees more migraine patients this time of year. Because of the increased number of triggers we have in terms of food and stimuli and stress and travel is another big one. Even bright holiday lights and the strong smell of scented candles can trigger migraines. So Dr. Dada says prevention is key. Hydrate, especially when traveling. Try to sleep at least seven hours a night and moderate food and alcohol intake. Sulfates in wine are often a trigger. Segura Katz modified her behavior to manage stress. She also uses prescription medications and gets regular Botox injections. It basically stops the pain receptors from overfiring. Doing okay? Yes. She's doing so much better this year that she plans to host her family for both Christmas and Hanukkah. So you want other people to know this is treatable? Yes, that's the whole reason of me being here. Putting her health first during the holidays to keep migraines at bay. Doctors say people who have more than 15 headaches a month may be suffering from migraines and could benefit from treatment. Women are more likely than men to experience migraines. Around the state, a horse in Wisconsin owes its life to some neighbors who sprang into action when it got into trouble. As Jonah Kaplan explains, the animal had fallen through ice on a frozen lake and rescuers had to think fast to get him to safety. We're out here in the middle of what's called Big Wood Lake, and because of the fresh snow, the fresh powder, you can't see any of the horse's tracks. But what you can see, all the footprints here, the team of people that came to his rescue, and then look at this flat area over here. That's actually where the horse was dragged to shore, 150 yards from where he fell on the ice. The place is known for its bass fishing, but there's never been a catch like this a 1,200-pound Mustang who wandered nearly six miles from his home barn. It was nerve-wracking. DJ Ryan was among the first responders. No, he's not an actual first responder, but in this small town of Grantsburg, Wisconsin, news travels fast. So we were able to see him obviously bobbing and struggling. It was just calling a bunch of mutual friends and, and horse people around the area, and I knew someone was going to know someone that had a, a warm, safe place that we could house if it was successful, and it was. Successful, but not without added stress. The temperature was five below, the ice only four inches thick. That meant the towing company could not bring out heavy equipment, so rescuers settled for rope and nylon straps. The hardest part was rigging the horse so we could safely pull it. We knew we couldn't pull the horse out by, by its neck or by its halter. Well, they got him, and he's now recuperating at the vet. DJ Ryan also gave him a new name. We kind of named him Jack out here when we were... From, right. from Titanic, you know, <laughs> we'll never let go of Jack. So but we didn't. We held on him the whole way. That's awesome. Now the horse got out of his pen Saturday night when a snow-covered tree fell and broke the fence. And he did suffer from some hypothermia during the night. 
Ahead of the winter storm, the United States Postal Service is reminding property owners to clear snow and ice from sidewalks and porches as soon as possible. That way, mail carriers will have a safe walking path. And if carriers don't have a clear path or a safe way to get to your home, your delivery, deliveries could be delayed. A lot of times, you know, the residents haven't cleaned off the uh, steps, the sidewalk that lead to the steps to the porch. And so going our approach as well as leaving is very critical to the safety of mail carriers. Businesses that have a blue USPS collection box nearby are also asked to clear snow and ice from around those boxes. Well, we're starting to see some of those cloudy weather conditions begin to move in uh, to the east now across the Cooley region. You can see it coming in from the west there. Our current temperatures here this morning are well below that zero degree mark here. As you can see behind me on the map, we're actually looking at a temperature of 10 below zero currently in Ladysmith. Meanwhile, the rest of us kind of into those single digit readings below zero. Uh, check now on your forecast overall today, 15 degrees, looking at some snow late here in the day, especially by the early evening. East winds 5 to 10 miles an hour under those cloudy skies and then by tonight you can see that snow here moving in temperatures at around three degrees for the low overall a very cold night here coming up here too in addition to the some of that snowy weather and for the drive cast overall a pretty cloudy here start to the morning commute and now we'll continue through the lunch hour and then watch out for some snow beginning to move in here from the west in our western zones here starting early this evening you'll probably be the first to tap into some of that snow we'll talk more about those in the full weather forecasts coming up in just a bit ken all right, thanks very much, Derek. It is 6.39 a.m. Coming up in your buzz report, the infamous feline returning and setting out on another adventure on the big screen. That story and more coming up after the break. Well, it sure is a very cold start out there this morning in La Crosse. Our current temperatures are at minus 5. In fact, we have a feel-like temperature of 16 below zero when you factor in the wind speeds here out of the north-northwest at around 5 miles an hour. Our river stage is at 5.17 feet and it's dropping here this morning along the Mississippi. Now, for the conditions to the north of La Crosse and Eau Claire, we're currently looking at 8 below zero here this morning and visibility looking good around 10 miles, as you can see there from our traffic camera. So, conditions here for that morning commute are looking good, but that's expected to change. We'll talk about that here in a second. Our current temperatures here this morning are well below zero all across the Cooley region this morning. And in fact, our feel like temperatures, in other words, the wind chills feel very similar to the actual temperatures here as well. As we just saw in La Crosse, 16 below zero, that wind chill there here for you again. All right, so for your day planner, conditions are going to turn very cloudy here later this morning and then continue through the day with temperatures warming up at least into the teens above zero here come later today. And you can see that here on the highs map across much of the Cooley region. All right, so over the last six hours or so, we have seen those clouds begin to increase, especially off towards the west. And this is really all associated with what's coming, a very strong winter storm system. And here is the beginnings of that winter storm system positioned to our west. As you can see, widespread cloud cover and some snowy weather moving in across the mountain west as well as the northern central U.S. plains. This is all moving our way. And I know it doesn't really look much right now, but it is expected to develop and mature as it continues to track its way towards the east across the upper Midwest. In fact, by 4 o'clock, we start to tap into some of that snow across our western zones, and then everybody across the Cooley region deals with it as we head into the evening hours. And then overnight tonight, still looking at some very heavy snow moving in across the area. But by Thursday morning, around 5 o'clock for that morning commute, most of the snow has fallen. A couple of scattered snow showers still kind of lingering. Same can be said as we head towards that 9 o'clock hour or so for Thursday. But then it looks like everything clears as most of the snowy weather associated with that low pressure system moves towards the east by Thursday afternoon and also well into Thursday evening, but it's going to continue to remain very cloudy, cold and very gusty, which we'll talk about here in a second. But you can see all of this cloud cover, at least behind that system, continues through Friday. All right, so speaking of the gusty conditions, let's actually talk a little bit more more about that here in detail. And you can see those gusty winds picking up here anywhere between 30 to 40 miles an hour or higher starting tomorrow night. And then after that, we continue to remain 
remain very gusty. In fact, Friday, you could argue that the wind speeds will be much stronger between 30 to 45 miles an hour here at times. And then as we take you into uh, Saturday morning, the wind speeds are still very strong, gusting up to 40 plus miles an hour in many spots. And it looks like those gusty conditions will continue through at least Saturday afternoon into the evening with 40 mile with 40 mile per hour gusts or higher at times. Now, the gusty conditions are also going to be impacting our wind chills. In fact, you can see this here on the wind chill tracker showing that when those wind speeds pick up Thursday night, the wind chills drop off dramatically up to 25 below zero in many spots and some some spots even colder than that by Friday morning up to 30 below. And it looks like that trend continues well into the day on Friday. Same can be said Saturday. In fact, you can argue Saturday morning probably very cold here too. 30 below zero in many spots here along the Cooley region, which will continue into Saturday afternoon as well. And keep in mind, we're not the only ones dealing with this massive winter system. So if you have travel plans anywhere really in these highlighted colors, keep in mind it's going to be pretty dangerous. In fact, here in the Cooley region, we are under winter storm warnings here for ourselves. Four to seven inches of snow, blowing snow after the snow falls here by the end of the work week, gusty winds, and of course, those travel impacts are definitely a concern. Here's a check on your eight-day forecast. We will be looking at conditions returning to normal just in time for Christmas Day with a high of 12 under mostly sunny skies that day. Well, after rumors that DC Studios wouldn't be producing a second Black Adam film, actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson has updated fans on Twitter. Although he didn't close the door on Black Adam returning in some form, he stated the character was not in DC's plans for the immediate future. The announcement comes as DC Studios confirmed actor Henry Cavill won't return as Superman, and Wonder Woman's third film is canceled. Despite the news, Johnson said he was very proud of making the Black Adam film. Eleven years after Puss in Boots starred in his first feature film, The Whiskered Outlaw is back for a sequel. The swashbuckling feline, voiced by Antonio Banderas, gets some catastrophic news in Puss in Boots' The Last Wish. He discovers that out of his nine lives, eight of them have been wasted. In hopes of finding the mythical Last Wish, Puss in Boots sets out on a quest, one that he must cautiously complete. Quite unusual for that courageous cat. It is 648. Let's head to break, Derek, with today's Look Who's Eight. That's right, Cam. we got a few of them to celebrate today. Happy eighth birthday to Ellie. Ellie is known to always have a smile on her face, and she loves to play outside, painting, and playing the piano. A happy eighth birthday to Bo. He loves ice cream, baseball, and Legos. A happy eighth birthday to Grace. She is a sweet and sassy girl who loves math, her dog, and family. And a happy 88th birthday to Jerry. Jerry is a retired farmer who enjoys spending time with his family. Well, if you know a special someone turning eight months, eight years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we love to feature them. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com. Look for the Submit Pictures button under the Home tab on our website. Stay with us. We have everything you need to know today. In five Time for your morning news now. Winter weather is on the way and those conditions could put the brakes on your holiday plans. The National Weather Service says La Crosse is expected to get four to eight inches of snow, but it could be even more. The snow combined with cold temperatures and high winds can lead to whiteout conditions and dangerous roads. There will be new fresh snow. How much, we don't quite know, but that new fresh snow is going to blow and that's what's going to cause the biggest impacts. Abbott says it's important to listen to alerts and pay attention to the forecast. If you must travel, make sure you have winter weather kits in your car. That includes jumper cables, food and water, a snow brush, and of course extra winter gear. The incoming storm could also lead to some electrical outages. Excel Energy employees say there are a few things you should keep in mind ahead of the storm. Stay away from any downed power lines and keep natural gas meters clear. If you're an Excel customer, you can sign up for outage notifications. Excel Energy crews are already preparing for this weather. We have meteorologists actually on our staff to predict our weather too as, as we're going forward. So we're looking really close at that, you know, to make sure we can provide electricity and natural gas, you know, in the coming week. To reduce your energy bill, Excel suggests turning down your thermostat when you're away from home and opening blinds to let some sunlight in. Ahead of the storm, the United States Postal Service is reminding property owners to clear snow and ice from sidewalks and porches as soon as possible. That way, mail carriers will have a safe walking path. If carriers don't have a clear path or a safe way to get to your home, your deliveries could be delayed. 
Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers says he is not ruling out the use of state funds to construct a passenger rail line between the cities of Madison and Milwaukee that would also expand connections between Chicago and St. Paul. Evers has told the Associated Press he supports the proposed rail project but was waiting to see what federal funds might be available before committing any state resources. Minnesota-based company 3M has announced it will phase out the manufacturing of so-called forever chemicals known as PFAS and remove them from all products by 2025. The chemicals used in non-stick frying pans, cosmetics, and many other products can cause cancers and other health problems. They're also bad for the environment because they don't degrade over time. Last year, Longfellow Middle School art teacher Shelley Walter Reinders turned on the TV and watched as Afghan refugees left their homes and arrived at Fort McCoy. Since then, she and her students have been learning about Islamic art. Walter Reinders applied for the Global Awareness Classroom Grant, which encourages classrooms to teach students about different cultures and religions around the world. Students in her art class have learned how shapes found in rugs, curtains, and pottery are a form of Islamic art. She also said she wants students to be accepting of religions and cultures that aren't the majority in the lacrosse community. It creates a place of support and welcoming for any students that we have in this building who are practicing Muslims, and that's super important because we are all in this together. Students made their own Islamic art tiles using clay and glaze. Those tiles are on display at Longfellow Middle School. And Walter Reinders says she hopes that Muslim students who walk by the display feel represented. All right, and as you head out the door this morning, here's a final check on your eight-day forecast. Alert days are in effect through Friday for snowy conditions through at least Thursday, followed by windy and very gusty conditions uh, tomorrow night. It looks like through early Saturday. Now we're kind of back to normal there for Sunday, but still very cold on Christmas Day with a high of 12. And you can see temperatures uh, warm up here a little bit further into the upper teens to the 20s by early next week. So maybe you could argue early next week, kind of back to normal there, but still cold though. No, the yeah. entire weather team is going to be out yep. in full force the next couple of days. I believe Eric might be joining us on the morning show Eric, tomorrow morning. Yep, Eric's scheduled to be here tomorrow morning in Storm Runner, so stay tuned. We'll keep you updated as everything happens here. All right, Eric's staying on it, keeping us all informed as we prepare for quite a storm system. Yeah. Thanks for watching News 8 Now, and don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on our website, news8000.com. We will, of course, have the latest updates to today's top stories and weather on News 8 Now at noon. That's Derek Sibley. I'm Ken Kozarowski saying thank you so much for joining us this morning and have a great rest of your day.